बिस्मिल्लाहमानीम डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय सेकंड क्लास एज इन प्रीवियस क्लासेस वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द ड्रग्स व्हिच आर सैप एंड प्रेगनेंसी सो नाउ टुडे इन दिस क्लास वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द डिफरेंट एंटीबायोटिक्स व्हिच आर सैप एंड प्रेगनेंसी सो देयर आर सम एंटीबायोटिक्स which can be used during pregnancy but there are certain drugs or antibiotic which cannot be recommended which are contraindicated during pregnancy you can see the table and this table i have mentioned this is generic or brand pregnancy category cross placenta rep reported adverse effect to mom or baby from use in pregnancy placenta therapy now these are different type of antibiotic and these either these antibiotic they are safe in pregnancy or not or they can it, it can cross placenta or not and then to which group these antibiotic uh, belong uh, to uh, particular categories pregnancy category drug so the first one is nitrofurantines you know nitrofurantines is the group of this is the group of antibiotic nitrofurantine it is available in a market by trend and macrobet this antibiotic belong to pregnancy category b group nitrofurantine so it can easily cross the placenta now these are the reported adverse effect to the mother and baby from use let's suppose if nitrofurantine is used and this drug belong to pregnancy category b so it can easily cross the placenta and fetus uh, it will cause hemolytic anemia so the place in therapy they are not mentioned here but you can see here that these are the adverse effects which are reported after administration of nitrofurantines during pregnancy so in fetus there may be chances of hemolytic anemia hemolytic anemia mean hemolysis rupturing of red blood cell the hb the hemoglobin level become low and the fetus and the bilirubin it will ultimately increase the second one is sulfamethoxazole sulfamethoxazole symbolically it can be represented by smx and trimethoprim it can be represented by tmp bactrim dsr ceftron ds so these are the generic names sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim in combination so they are available in a market by a trade name bactrim ds and ceftron ds so it belong to pregnancy category c sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim it belong to it belong to which group so uh, you can say uh, these are uh, sulfonamides and uh, trimethoprims actually these are bacteriostatic as well as bactericidals so it belong to uh, sulfonamide group sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim it belong to sulfonamide group and these are pregnancy category c drugs it can the sulfamethoxazoles so still uh, they haven't mentions that uh, either it can cross the placenta or not so uh, still uh, it is been under investigation that is unknown while they try me to open it can easily cross the cross placenta let's suppose if these drugs are used during pregnancy so in fetus these drugs will cause sulfamethoxazole at sulfamethoxazole it is used during pregnancy so there may be a chances of jaundice in the fetus and with the bilirubin level it become high high and hemolysis uh, rupturing of red blood cell will take place hemolytic chances of hemolytic anemia and possibly connectaris so this is another uh, rear kind of abnormality Uh, especially uh, the narrow system uh, the bilirubin level it become high and uh, due to which uh, the brain of the uh, fetus it become damaged so the tmp neural tube defect may be occur to the fetus epsilpamethoxazole and tri ep trimethoprim is used so due to use of trimethoprim methoprim during pregnancy neural tube defect can occur oral clefts in the form of oral crypts 
clefts, cardiac defects, and urinary tract defects. Sulpamethaxazole and trimethoprim, so they are not recommended in pregnancy place in therapy, so they cannot be. So it means that sulponamide they are not safe in pregnancy. After that, metronidazole, as we know that the most common drug which is available in a market by trade name Flygel at the dose of 400 milligram it belongs to pregnancy category B this is category, pregnancy category B it belongs to this category so Flygel or metronidazole it can easily cross the placenta during pregnancy if a pregnant woman she is using metronidazole uh, so and fetus it will cause LBW low birth weight baby spontaneous abortion and there may be chances of carcinogenic possibilities now metronidazole either it is safe in pregnancy or not so metronidazole metronidazole is safe for use only in second and third trimester so it means that metronidazole it can be used only in second and third trimesters now the the points which uh, i am going to explain this is according to the for, uh, fda after these drugs they have been approved by the food and drug administration so on the basis of that i would like to uh, say to clear uh, the concepts that uh, which drugs they are safe which kind of drug they are safe in pregnancy or uh, contraindicated Metronidazole is available uh, by trade name Flygels and topicals they are also available by metrogen names also belong to category B so it can cross the placenta and not the mutagenic or teratogenic effects topical they have not mutagenic or teratogenic so metronidazole as we know that so they are contraindicated in the first trimester and first trimester they are contraindicated now come to another antibiotic that is called clindamycin so clindamycin it is available in a market by different name like clucine clindagil and clucine t or glycine t clindamycin uh, so it belongs to uh, category b and uh, pregnancy category b while it can easily cross the placenta and fetus if clindamycin they are used during pregnancy so it will increase in neonatal infections and low birth weight seen and with vaginal preparations for for bv bacterials uh, vaginosis are oral alternative but not the topical ones Group B, streptomycin, the disease in patient with penicillin allergy. Now, tetracyclines. Tetracyclines, it belong to category D, category D, pregnancy category D group. So, this is clear. Those agents which belong to pregnancy category D, so they are not recommended in pregnancy. It cannot, it means these drugs are not safe during pregnancy. In fetus, it will cause hypospadia. Hypospadia. This is also one of the uh, abnormality. Uh, you can study, uh, inshallah, in my pathology class. So, in fetus, if tetracycline is used during pregnancy, so there may be 100% chances of hypospadia uh, in first trimester only, uh, as well as uh, there may be, it, it, it may cause in guineal hernia limb hypoplasia teeth dis teeth discoloration second and uh, third uh, uh, while cataract and cleft fillet spina bifida and polydactylism polydactyls polydactyl means when there are when when there is multiple digits mean more than five and six fingers so this is also a kind of abnormality so that's why due to these uh, these are the adverse effects which are reported by the food and drug administrations and the treachers which are the adverse effects which are reported here so it means that this drug is contraindicated so they are not recommended in pregnancy after that another antibiotic that is called cephalosporin so cephalosporin it belongs to pregnancy category b so it can cross placenta still the adr adverse regression they are not reported but generally it is considered safe in pregnancy unless penicillin allergic people especially uh, and penicillin uh, those uh, patients who are allergic to uh, penicillin group uh, 
so uh, then uh, you then you can use cephalosporins uh, with proper precautions but if the patient is not allergic to penicillins in this case generally it is considered safe in pregnancy the next one is penicillins beta lactamases inhibitor so as we know that all these are called beta lactamases inhibitor or cervalsins inhibitor so it belong to category pregnancy category b group so it can easily cross the placenta placenta and while they aid your adverse regression they are not reported so penicillin or cervical synthesis inhibitor or beta lactamase inhibitor this is one of the safest class of this is one of the safest class of mean uh, they are uh, they can be used in pregnancy if the patient is not allergic to this group then it mean that this group is the safest class and uh especially in pregnancy if they are if the patient is not allergic to uh, penicillin then you can use it especially penicillin and beta lactamases these are all the uh, drug of choice for syphilis desensitized if penicillin are allergic drug of choice for syphilis now come to all macrolide macrolide this is another group of antibiotics so uh, macrolide is uh, further divided into many groups like uh, azithromycin telethromycin clarithromycin so azithromycin uh, clarithromycin it belong to pregnancy category b while clarithromycin it uh, clarithromycin it belong to category c it can easily cross the placenta when it cross the placenta so these are the ad or adwords drug reaction which are reported by the uh, fda my ep macrolide is used during pregnancy so it may cause cardiovascular abnormalities and cleft palate with clarithromycin so these are the adr which are reported still it uses uh, they it mean that uh, uh, you can see here uh and category b so mean there are some uh, uh you can say there are some uh, recommendations they are not also recommended not recommended in pregnancy so still its place of therapy is unknown but uh, it mean that these are the adr adverse regression which are reported uh, after uh, the use of macrolides so then these drugs can be used with precautionary measurements with precautions now come to all fluoroquinolone fluoroquinolone is another group of antibiotic it belong to pregnancy category c so it can cross the placenta so when it cross the placenta so it will cause erosions erosions erosion of weight bearing cartilage in rats and dogs but no human report still in human beings there are no such a Uh, case where such a uh, adverse drug effect they are reported in humans, but uh, erosion of weight bearing cartilage may be occurs in rats and dogs, but they are not recommended in pregnancy. Fluoroquinolone they are also not recommended in pregnancy. So fluoroquinolones uh, it contains uh, uh, leucofloxacin, ciprofloxacin, norfloxacin, getafloxacin. All these belong to fluoroquinolones. now come to all amino glycoside so amino glycoside this is another group of antibiotic which contains amikacins gentamicin and tobramycin belong to pregnancy category d it can easily cross the placenta so when it cross the placenta so this point is clear so in fetus if amino glycoside if these antibiotic are used during pregnancy so it may produce or cause some toxic reaction like and it may be in the form of autotoxicity or deafness Uh, damage of eighth cranial nerve may be damage. So this is one of the serious ADR which is reported after the administration of amino glycosides. Neuromuscular weakness, respiratory depressions with concomitant gentamicins and magnesium sulfate. So these are the ADR which are reported. So it means. that amino glycosides they are not safe in pregnancy do not use in pregnancy not unless the benefit or with the risk to the fetus so these drugs can be also used with precautions inshallah my third lecture will be about the anti epileptic drug there are certain anti epileptic drugs 
uh, which are given in the literatures either they are safe in pregnancy or not so inshallah i will discuss in, in my third class thank you so much for watching my lecture